And we keep growing and we never get perfect until we are transformed and taken home. But, but we keep growing. And here's one great instrument in that growth. You shall surely tithe. Why? So that you may learn. Tithing teaches us. Mark it down. Tithing teaches us. You want to learn? Tithing will teach you. You consistently tithe in 2010. And I want to tell you, if God tarries and we're still here in 2011, you will be a different person by this time next year. You will. You'll be a different person by this time next year. It won't happen overnight. You don't tithe one week and the next week you're... No, no. I mean, it takes, it takes some time. You, God's got a lot of work to do on you. Um, but look at this. Look what it says. I want, to, I want you to see it one more time. So that you may learn to fear the Lord. Do you know what Proverbs says? Listen to this. Proverbs says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God wants you to develop a wisdom. A wisdom that is not given by just knowledge in the head. But a, it, it's beyond that. Listen, I want to tell you something. When you put God first... And God is able to teach you to fear him. I'll tell you something. God will give you a wisdom to use the nine tenths way better than you had, if you had the whole ten tenths. Did you know that? I'm telling you it's true. At least one person agrees with me. No, yeah, oh, your wife did. There's three of us. Praise God. Let's move on. Number five, another reason that God wants you to give is it makes us godly. For God so loved the world, he what? He gave. God is a giver. God is a giver. Oh, I'd like to be like God, Pastor Carl. You know, I just want God to transform me. I want, I want to be like God. Well, you know what? God wants to change you into just a person who wants to hoard and get and get and get and live for self. God wants you to learn to give. Learn to give. For God so loved the world, he gave. Number six. Number six. Why does God want me to give? Because it brings God's love upon your life. Look at what he says. Each one must do as he has purposed in his heart. This comes from your own heart. You don't do it because Pastor Carl said do it. It comes from your heart. Uh, not grudgingly or under compulsion. Not because somebody beat you over the head and said you better do this. Oh, no, we don't do that here. We just preach God's truth and let God work in hearts. For God loves a cheerful giver. Did you see that little phrase? God loves a cheerful giver. Pastor Carl, doesn't God love everybody? Yes. God loves you even if you're an old grouch. And we accept old grouches here, so don't worry about it. I see one or two of you kind of old grouches here. All except for this guy and his wife. But everybody else, old grouch. I'm having fun this morning. I don't know about you. You know, a lot of preachers don't like to talk about giving. It makes them nervous. Nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof. Doesn't make me nervous at all, you know that? Because I've been doing it for 37 years, and I have found it's one of the greatest things. It's one of the greatest truths to change lives. I have found it's incredible. It's amazing. Where was I? I got off. Uh, oh, cheerful giver, yes. God loves a cheerful Doesn't God love everybody? Yes. God loves everybody. But listen, God has a special place in his heart for those who come to the place where giving is a joy. Not a grudge. Not a. He has a special place. I mean, how would you like to give? How, I mean, how would you like to receive from people who were kind of didn't really want to give it to you? You know? Okay, Galen, it's your birthday. I got you something for your present. I really couldn't afford it, but here it is. You think Galen would like to have that? Galen would say, keep it. Is God any different? God likes for his people to say, Lord, you have blessed us so much. You've given me so much. I just love to give some back to you. I love to do that, God. It's such a joy. And God says, that's wonderful. And 
He loves the cheerful giver. Number seven. Why does God want me to give? Because it brings God's blessing on my life. It brings God's blessing. So, Pastor Carl, if I give, I'll be a millionaire? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. God may not be able to trust me with a million dollars, but listen to this. I want you to see this verse in 2 Corinthians 9. Look at this with me. Now, this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. In a few months, here in Nebraska, farmers all over this state, all over this state, will get on their tractors and get in their tractors and go out and turn over the soil, and they will take, they will take thousands of dollars of seed. Thousands of dollars of seed. I, I have no idea how much. Millions of dollars of seed and put it in the ground. And we could say, how foolish. You could take that seed and feed your cattle with it. Why would you put it in the ground? Why would you put that seed down in the ground? That's crazy. But you see, those farmers, they sow that seed with hope in their heart for a harvest that will come in the fall. And when they put those little seeds of corn down in the ground, do you know what happens? From, the, from a seed grows a whole stock. And on that stock are many ears and many, many seeds. It multiplies many fold. Listen, that is what God is saying to you. He compares your giving to sowing the seed. We look at giving as a loss. Oh, man, I gave a hundred bucks. Now I'm a hundred bucks shorter. No, God said you didn't lose it. You invested it. You sowed it. Farmer doesn't wipe tears as he drives his tractor through the field planting that seed. Oh, I'm losing all this seed. It's awful. No. He's planting that seed with hope in his heart. And I want you to know that when you give, God says, you can expect to reap. Some in this life. Not all in this life. Jesus said, lay up treasures in heaven. And then in Malachi, God said, will a man rob God? Boy, he's asking that. The prophet there is asking that in shock. Would a man, a mortal man, rob God, the almighty God? Huh. Would a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me, God says. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and in offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. 